All right, let's start with uh, John Mallory, and then we'll go Ron and BJ. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Had Mountain West me. Apologize. All good, Coach. Um, I'll start you right off. Is it harder to play at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. than maybe 9 a.m.? I know you have a lot of experience with the first option, but Tim Plow said sometimes it's better just to get up and roll. You know what? We um, we practice in the mornings now, Johnny, so uh, we, we operate in the mornings now. It's, yeah, yeah, that's a little bit earlier. The wake up is just a little bit earlier than what the boys are used to getting up, but – I mean, that's when we have our meetings. That's when we practice. And we've done a much better job getting ourselves ready to roll in the mornings and, and how we show up here. I mean, obviously, it, it takes a growing into growing those habits and being able to wake up and be a self-starter and things like that. And that's been a piece that's, um, you know, been a big part of our growth lately. So we're going to need that bright and early on, on Friday morning. What aspects of being a head coach do you feel like you're – better at now than maybe you were two months ago I mean just the overall balance having to learn just like everybody else you know day in and day out what did we do well what didn't we do what did we not do well and how can we do it better and even the things that we've done well how can we continue to do better how can I balance it out what areas can I help what what support do I need to um, do a better job of you know the organization if that's what it is the motivation if that's what it is um you know, in all areas underneath this roof. And it's been, you know, obviously a, um, I can't believe we're already on our last game here. How about that? I'll just say that, but it's, you know, through it all, it's been a really, really good experience learning and it's been awesome. And it's been great to work with the men and women underneath this roof. The players have been awesome. And, uh, you know, we, we want to work to be our best this week. Thanks coach. Hey, Coach, uh, so whether it's running the ball or defending the run, uh, you guys are just a different team since the bye week. Outside of the obvious of getting the Halani back, you know, why do you think you guys are so much better in those areas? Well, um, just we've committed ourselves to doing certain things, you know, in terms of Johnny's question too, just the commitment starting from the, you know, everybody underneath this roof. That This is football and it's a physical game and how are we going to do that? What's everybody's responsibility that goes into that? You know, that's just one area. I mean, we can sit here and talk about, stuff for the rest of the day about, you know, what we do need to do to continue to improve in, in the areas. But when it comes to running the football, it's everybody in this building. It's the people in the training room getting the guys ready um, to play, to practice and, and, and prepare a certain way that it takes to play on game day. It's obviously the coaches, it's uh, the strength staff. It's the video people, you know, making sure that we get the right stuff on film that we need in all our drills, not just the team periods, the individual, the group periods. It's everybody in the building committing to, to help and create a certain mentality because this is football and it starts with the mentality and the physicality. And you look at JL Skinner. I mean, he, he's had some huge hits this year. He's also struggled with some, some targeting calls. Where would you say you've seen him grow the most this season? Well, I mean, are you talking in terms of his tackling or, or in general? Just, just overall as a football player. I think in the last couple of weeks, he's, he's done an unbelievable job with his eye control and whether that's in the pre-snap and seeing his keys all the way to the finish and where he's striking people, right? That's a big part of it. Where you, where your eyes are when, when you tackle somebody or you strike someone is going gonna, is gonna to be a big part of how um, that play finishes. Thanks, Coach. Andy, what's your uh, just thoughts on the way it's set up with the you know Mountain Division and West Division? I know there's some talk of maybe getting rid of the divisions and just having the top two teams play in the championship game. I, I know you got a lot on your plate, but just the way it's set up and, and potentially moving forward, what, what do you think of just the, the format for the championship game? You know what? Um, <laughs> I don't have a lot of thoughts on that right now to, to answer your question, but I think it's always interesting to see how we can grow, BJ. I know with certain uh, playoff stuff going in the future and all those things, I'm sure there's going to be some adjustments going forward, but I, I really – I'm sorry, man, but I don't have anything for that, that story right now because I don't have very many thoughts on that. I'm focused on what we're doing this week. No doubt. Um, it, it was, speaking of this week, I mean, when, when the schedule came out, everybody looked at that and said that could be a big game to finish the season. And, and it's obviously proven to to be that way. San Diego State's playing for just as much, you know, as you guys are. Yeah. If I'm, uh, you know, what, what just just, you know, to have it be on big CBS and, and, you know, just have two teams playing for a lot on the line. I know Tim Plow said this is why you play college football. I mean, from your perspective to still have this game matter as much as it does. Uh, what's the feeling like? Yeah, I mean, it's like he said, this is why we do it, you know, and um it's not only a huge uh, opportunity for both teams, 
for it to be the last game of the season and, and there be a lot of things on the line, you know, that, that um, you know, are going to happen bright and early on, on Friday morning, the day after Thanksgiving, on top of that, right? We were all kids one day and loved playing football on Thanksgiving and running around in the park in the street. Now we get to do it on that type of stage. And I think that's pretty special in how we work and how we prepare um, should represent that. And really that's the focus of, of what we're doing. And that's how I answered your previous question that way, because we're not worried about anything else but that right now and enjoying this process of what we dreamed about to do since we were kids and what we would mimic in the streets and then go inside and watch whatever our favorite rivalry game was on TV. We're not morning people, Andy Media. You guys may be ready for 9 a.m., but maybe you get some tips. We'll for have that. some coffee for you. Come on over to the hotel where we're staying, man. We got you. Extra strong. Sure. Let you get some of that uh, fuel <laughs> that the coaches are going to be hitting in the morning. Come on, man. That sounds good. Thank you. Let's go, Bob, and then Jay. Coach, uh, when you look at uh, the three three five that we saw last week with New Mexico and then this week at San Diego State, how much better is this group going to be when you factor in the they've run it a lot longer and the talent that they have out there? Where is where is this group going to be better than New Mexico? Well, um, you know, Danny's uh, rebuilding that program at New Mexico and, and utmost respect for him, you know, and the coaches there and what they're doing. Um, but he's they're in the phase of rebuilding it and um you know obviously rocky was at san diego state and what they built there and how competitive they are year in and year out uh, their their defense has been tremendous for a stretch here and uh, the new coaching staff has continued on with that you know coach hoke is um, a really really good defensive coach himself and has spent time and um again years back uh you know when he was a head coach there to the first time around and sat in his office and talked about the line play with him. He's a, he's a tremendous defensive line coach, a defensive coach. And um, they've played that way this year. They've got talent up front. It'll be one of the most talented fronts that we've played all year. Uh, if not the most talented, they play physical, they play aggressive and they do a great job in the secondary um, disguising covered shells in the pre-snap and you, and you got to react when that ball snap. And then looking at their offense, how would you compare their running game with some of the best running games we've seen both in the blocking and in the running backs? The, the O-line is going to be the best O-line. You know, um, when you, you put the tight ends in there and the running backs hit this thing downhill. They're, they're a zone-based, whether it be inside or outside, you know, scheme team. And that takes uh, – Oh, linemen that can move. They got quick feet and they can come off the ball and move the line of scrimmage as well. And then within those schemes, tailbacks that have great vision and a burst um, to put their foot in the ground and go. And we've seen that numerous times on film. That's why they are one of the best rush teams in the nation as well. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. What's up, Andy? What's up, Jay? What's going on? Um, you know, when uh... – you know, after talking with some of your players after the game last night, they're, they're cl they clearly like being around each other. Um, how important is that at this point in time in the season when the grind starts to set in? And as a coach, I, I assume it's, it's got to be encouraging to see your team improve over the course of, of the year. So how, how much does that love and, and liking to be around each other go into that, that last part? I mean, it's everything. It's everything, and that's what we've worked to build here. And, um, you know, it, it, it's really, really hard to do this day in and day out and be consistent. But loving to be around each other, loving to come here and work together and for everyone to do um, their job, to do their part that it takes to be a team and to do it with a certain purpose and a certain mentality and have fun doing it and having a, a great attitude about doing it. And, and that's what they did today coming off a, a Monday, two days combined, right into our Tuesday practice. Um, we put something together to get done what we needed to get done to take care of them. They competed now. They competed as good as they have in certain drills out there today, and they had fun doing it. And, you know, the, this program, this program is only as strong as the individuals that, that are growing it and that are committed to growing it a certain way. And they've done an unbelievable job, you know, down the stretch here, and we got to be our best this week. Um, Andy, I know that you guys, you know, by running the football, you said that uh, it helps your mentality, it helps your toughness. Considering you're going against a, 
an, uh, you know, a team that that's kind of their identity as well. How much will this game kind of test the, the toughness of your team and, and, and ultimately the, the outcome of this game? It'll be the biggest test. I mean, they're, they're a physical team. They're a big physical team, both sides of the ball. That's what they do. And it's going to be our biggest test up front on both sides. I'm not just saying it because it's the game of the week. It's the mission is go 1-0. and oh, it's, They're the best fronts. They're the best fronts we've seen. So there's a tremendous task in front of us. Um, at the end of the day, it's always about how we prepare, how we focus on what we need to do. Thanks, Eddie. So Mike and then Will. Andy, as a head coach with a defensive background, what are you seeing with this offense when it gets into the red zone? I'm sure you would love to trade touchdowns for field goals. I love putting points on the board, Mike. And ultimately, that's what win game, wins games. Um, but from the standpoint of just the efficiency, um, you know, just being able to, when you get down in the red zone, obviously the field is, is shrunk. And football is about space. The offense using space, the defense not allowing the offense to use space and leveraging formations. And so how we use that space down there is everything. That starts with our personnel. That starts with the things that, that we're comfortable doing and creating a, you know, a rhythm and a pattern of which we can do those things with great confidence. But ultimately, the goal is to, is to put points on the board. And we've continued to do that down there in the red zone. Talk about your players, you know, enjoying the journey, having lots of fun. We, we've learned a lot about you in the last few months. Um, your passion and your business-like intensity for this football program are unmatched. But how much are you enjoying the journey? How much are you having fun this football season? You know, as much as it may not seem like it, Mike, I love it. I love this. I love it. Like, I know I got to come on here and answer tough questions sometimes and all that, but Hey, it's part of it, Mike. It ain't the first time I've had to do it, you know, maybe in this role or this seat. But I love it because I love the people in this building. I love being back here. I love where we're growing. And, again, being around these guys, being around these players, being around this staff, it's a blessing. It may not always seem like it. You know, you got to sort through a lot of different stuff if you pay attention to it. But if you don't, you don't. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you, brother. Hey, Andy, what are your thoughts on their punter? Man, he, he smashes that thing. I think you all seen that. Woo. I mean, it's moon balls. So, you know, he's uh, very talented. He's on a lot of award watch lists. And, yeah, I don't he, – he gets in that ball, and that thing flies off his foot a little different now. So, um, what that presents in a lot of different ways – you know, and some of the things, some of the challenges uh, that presents, um, you know, it's presented for some people, limits opportunities in some areas. It presents opportunities. So, What are your thoughts on their lead running back, Greg Bell? Shoot, I remember him when he was in high school. He's just developed into a great running back. I mean, he's – I mean, his burst is elite now, and he'll run behind his pads. He's got a, he's got a great old line in front of him like we spoke about. Um, when, and the biggest part about him too, is his vision. You'll notice, I mean, if you watch enough film on him, you'll see his vision when he makes that cut and he hits that next gear. It's, it's pretty impressive. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. We got time. So let's go Ron and then uh, Jay for follow-ups. So coach, uh, since you guys are four, no, since the bio, we got, I think it's easy to assume that that was kind of the turning point in the season, but I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, what was the turning point? Was it a performance in a game, a moment in practice, a moment in, in, in a team meeting? What was it? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into that stuff. You know, again, to draw back to whatever that is, five weeks ago, four weeks ago, um, you know, I'm focused on the present right now. Again, like we keep drawing forward or drawing back, Ron, and I'd love to talk to you after the season about what, when I have the time to sit here and think about, you know, all the moving pieces that have grown all the different departments in this building. Cause it's not just, it's, it's all of us here working to be our best, to have the best impact for these players is people is students. Um, that's the other part you, you guys don't see. I mean, what we're doing academically right now is it's, it's pretty good. It's really good. 
but nobody sees that either. Nobody wants to talk about that. The impact we're having there, what our staff is doing, what our academic staff is doing has been remarkable. And now we got to finish strong. And that's the message right there. The things we've committed ourselves to do and how we work with a certain purpose, it's not just on the field, it's in the classroom. And we know what the standard is off the field. It needs to be handled all the same. We can't live two different lives. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, bud. Uh, a simple one. I asked your, your coordinators this too, but um, hey, th Thanksgiving right around the corner. What are, you, what are you thankful for? Oh, there's so much. There is so much to be thankful for, but health, number one. You know, always. Always, uh, you know, you, you, I think people take that for granted and, and they let the small things in a certain day um, turn their their day upside down when there's so many things to be grateful for that can be a lot worse and, and, and dampen a day. And I know we all have people that, uh, you know, whether it be in our families or friends that, um, you know, are battling through things health wise. And the reason why I'm thankful for that, because in a lot of instances, we can't do anything for those people. And so always thankful for when people are healthy, both mentally and physically. And, um, you know, thankful for my family at home and more my family here. And we get to spend this Thanksgiving with both of them. So it's going to be it's going to be an awesome Thanksgiving. I appreciate you, too, Jay. I'm thankful for you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Let's go to BJ for the last question. Kind of on the same line, Coach. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to the Cathedral, the Rockies uh, thing on, on you, know, you guys are going to go on Wednesday for the Thanksgiving uh, you know, feed the, the homeless. Yes. I don't know if you've been there before, but just to have your younger guys and some of your players be a part of that and kind of remember, you know, what, what Thanksgiving is for and, and how lucky that, you know, what some of the things you guys have are, what's, what's that experience going to be like for your players and for you? <clears throat> well, I can say this, like that's one of the things that moving out of this pandemic and BJ and being able to get our players involved and take care of our community, the way they take care of us and get them back out there. Um, to help serve meals, not only on Thanksgiving, to be able to have these other opportunities to do that, to be able to get back in schools, right, BJ, and read books to kids, to go hang out with kids, go run around on the playground, play some dodgeball, shoot some hoops. I mean, we've been doing that for a long time here. And, um, you know, but it's even more special uh, to show thanks, to show gratitude. That's a huge part, Ron. Ron was asking about, you know, a big part, what took place, you know, how many ever weeks ago was that? It's living with more gratitude. And I think guys start to understand those things too when they're able to jump into the community and go help people and the feeling they get from helping people, um, whether they be kids or, or people less fortunate or whatever the case may be. Um, I think that helps all of us grow. And so we're looking forward to doing that, um, spending some time with people and uh, putting, us, putting a smile on their face, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right, Eddie, appreciate the time. Happy Thanksgiving and good luck. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Hope you guys are blessed and enjoy time with your families. Have a good week. I'll have some coffee for you, BJ. I'll be there. Thanks. Straight or cream? Straight black. 10-4.